Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So another episode of Trash Talk here. Uh, we're with Joey, the Hitman Heart, uh, Damian Hill as well. We're talking to Joey about his upcoming fight, May thirty first for the LFA. How you doing tonight, sir? Oh, I'm great. How are you guys doing? I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'm same, dude. I feel excellent. <laughs> yeah, so just wanted to give a little intro here for the fans. Quick, get to let them know you. Quick, I uh, wanted to give a little background as far as where you're from, what gym you train at. So I'm from uh, Wilmer. I uh, I been training at start bjj for um well i've been training full-time there since december now but i was training there like once a week uh dating back to like last uh february or so and yeah since december i've been there full-time like training every day hold on, hold on. you weren't training full-time before no I, you... I was I, I was i was well i was i was training full-time but just not there like it was basically all on my own or uh back in Wilmer at, at Golden Gloves Boxing. So I was working with Cody and Levi Milhausen when, when they were in and uh, some other guys. Okay, I was like, I, dude, you are a fucking monster. To yeah, say I that, appreciate it. I mean, for you revealing to us right now that uh, even in your earlier fights that you weren't full-time training and shit, I'm like, dude, you had some really impressive wins. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I've always, yeah, I've always trained hard, but like mostly the jiu-jitsu, like there was some fights where some of my earlier fights, like I might have trained, I might have done jujitsu maybe four times in the in the month leading up to the fight, but since uh, since December I've been working hard, so it's, it's I feel like I'm gonna improve quickly. That that's a mind trip for me right now, just because of like how successful you've been and how talented we both, me and TJ, both think that you are. For you to feel like that you're there's more you can put into this game that you haven't been putting into. I'm like. Dude, like that makes me more excited for your future fights. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit off topic what we're what we're trying to talk about, but dude, like my I I can't hide my my excitement and enthusiasm when when I find out shit like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I I think like my my last fight was the first the first one where I was training full time here was at start with Brock and those guys, and that was like my my most uh, like complete fight I think it's the only time I've won by decision, so I was able to like prove I was better over three rounds, I guess. Yeah, yeah instead of just getting a quick finish. Definitely showed up in that fight against a tough guy, and I, and I agree um, as far as performances go. You have a, very, a lot of tough, good finishes, but I feel like that was your most well-rounded performance. Um, and just with that information, you know, going back to just starting your full-time camp, it's great to see that. And, and you're so young as well. So this is the time where you're going to see those jumps. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you're going into this full time, uh, that's great. Uh, you know, a little background as far, you know, uh, three time LFA veteran, even this early in your career, this would be your fourth LFA fight, correct? Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. Fourth time. And then, uh, you know, we have you ranked number one in the trash talk rankings at 170 pounds. Um, you were there initially. And like I said, uh, when <laughs> went through the first time, I think it was unanimous on my end talking with the people that I do consult with that uh, there was no other guy to put at number one just based off that last, you know, let alone you, you've only been fighting for two years, but that last year you've really seemed to be putting it together and finishing guys on a four fight winning streak. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, and there's a lot of guys around like uh, at the top of the rankings too, who I feel like are pretty good, Yeah. but I guess I've been pretty consistent. It's so like, yeah. Consistency is a great word for it. Um, and like I said, going back to that experience of being, you know, three times already competed in the LFA, which is, you know, just under the UFC as far as promotions right now, um, right. as far as national attention goes, what do you think having that experience has done for you this early in your career as far as your confidence and just how you feel going into fights? Yeah, I think it does a lot. Like, um, I don't. I don't really look too much into like the like promotions. Obviously, it's awesome fight for LFA because, like you said, they're they're like nationwide. They're doing big shows and they're signing guys straight to the UFC. But to me, it's just like the opponents and like the experience in the cage. You know, uh, just getting to like really go go through all those motions a few times or be doing it every so every a uh, couple months. How I have been staying active. I feel like that's the biggest part. Like staying warm, I guess. 
Yeah, I, I think it's a, a proper introduction to the big stage. Like when you when you do get there, because I believe you're a guy that's going to get there. Uh, when you get to that next level, you know, as a pro and everything, the the introduction has been made. I I, I talked in one of my previous interviews that I've done uh, about guys dipping their toes in the water. Well, why are you dipping your toes in the water? You already know what the water feels like, you know. And I feel like you're yep. gonna have that 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 type of experience and that type of mindset once you go pro. I this is something I say constantly. I hate putting words in fighters' mouths, you know. Like I, I I've done an interview before and people tried to speak for me. I'm like, uh-huh. dude, that's not what I, I I just gave you the answer. Stop trying to tell people what my answer is. I, right. What I said is what I'm saying. You know, but I, I feel like that that's what it's going to be for you when you jump into the 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 pro scene and start. Dude, I, I really feel like you're going to have the same type of run that you're having right now as an amateur. You know, there the, a lot of the guys right now that are at at your weight and at the amateur level have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> yeah, uh, I appreciate that. No, I, I, th- I think the same. Like, I think. uh I look at some of the guys like in the regionals, like the professional 170 pounders, and I think I could beat a lot of them. But um, I just I'm just waiting, I guess. Like whenever my coaches say it's time to go pro, that'll be the time. That's just back to that. And there's no rush to. I mean, like I kind of touched on again. I mean, you're 21, 22 years old. Yep, 21. Yeah, I mean, wow. there, there's there's no rush at this point. Um, you have a great team of coaches behind you. Um, you know, yeah, for sure. Brock Larson, like you mentioned. Uh, so I, I think it's perfect to take your time and just seek out those challenges as an amateur, um, which just, like I said, when you make that jump to the pro level, like you you, were, you already said, you feel like you can beat a lot of these guys already. So you know you're going to be ready to make that jump. And we've seen that with a lot of guys, especially from your gym, make that pro jump recently. Yeah. Just going into, you know, not looking ahead, we got your next fight here, May 31st. You're fighting Tim Garrett from Iowa, uh, yes, 74. Sir, sir. What do you know about him? Um, and he's powerful. He's, uh, he's a vet, I guess, with, uh, what, yeah. 11 fights. Um, he's been, fi- he's been doing it for a long time. He's, he's an older guy, but he's, uh, yeah, he's real experienced. He's tough. He's, he's got power in that right hand. So I got to look out for that. Um, I guess that's all I really know. I've seen, I've watched a few of his fights. I don't like to like over, overthink it too much, but he's, he's a tough guy. Should be a good fight. Yeah. I look at him and he does have a lot of fights, you know, like you mentioned, he's seven and four, 11 fights. But they've been spaced out over a long period of time. Exactly. You have eight fights yourself, and that we're talking just over two years. And I feel like that experience and consistency um, is something that does pay a factor. Uh, he's on a two-fight winning streak. Those two fights span your whole career. He hasn't fought in over a year at this point. Mm-hmm. Now he's making the jump for the first time fighting on a stage such as the LFA. Um what do you think, you know, do you think ring rust is a factor here? I know you mentioned you don't want to put too much in stock into him, but how do you think this plays out on your end? Um, yeah, I think, I think I'll be more comfortable in there than him, but I feel that way with a lot of my opponents, like some of them, maybe they, they, I, I feel like they look a little more nervous or they, they just aren't as comfortable. Like they want to, um, I don't know. They just, I don't know. It's, I think, I think he will, uh, He'll be ready and he'll be like prepared and everything, but I just don't think he'll be ready as I am. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things we we never like to ask leading up to a fight because because it, it's so coveted. Uh, never want to bring up a game plan here. So without going into you know as far as what what any type of execution, what do you have to do, whether it be inside the cage or outside the cage, to ensure that you get your hand raised on May thirty first? Um. I just got to keep doing what I'm doing. I think like outside of the cage, just keep, keep showing up to practice and going hard and stuff like that. But in, in the fight, um, I feel like I have the same game plan every time. It's just to like strike with them, try to knock them out if I can. And I guess, I don't know. I've never in my eight fights, I've, I haven't shot a takedown yet. So it's never like wrestling isn't really in the game plan, I guess, but I think I could out wrestle him at the same time. And I think I'm a better grappler than him at the same time. So I guess if it goes there, I don't mind. You you trained with Bobby Lee, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When when I was speaking with Bobby Lee during our interview, he was saying that he doesn't like to go into the fight thinking too much about it. The same kind of what you're saying right now. Um, he says that when he tells Brock, uh, this is what the guy does. This is what he liked to do. This is his background and stuff. He says, okay, well, he's probably going to try and hit you. 
He's going to try yeah. to kick you, kick you when it's open, try to take you down when it's there, try to right. do this. So just be prepared for anything. And I'm like, I, I really dig that mindset that you guys, I feel like uh, everyone at your gym and team that uh, is working with Brock feels like that. And I, I honestly, I think more fighters need to expand that aspect. Just like they're going to try to do something to you. Be ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> anything, no matter what. <laughs> Yeah, no, I uh, and I, I love watching tape. Like I w love watching film on the guys. It's something I like to do if I'm just sitting at home. <laughs> is just watch watch my opponents' fights. But I don't like to like with the game plan part of it. I don't like to think too much into that because some guys they have like a certain idea in their head of how the fight's gonna go, and once it starts to kind of go like off track of that, they they freak out or they're like, oh, you know, it's not not going how I want it to go. For me, I don't really have. I I know what I'd like to do, but I don't really care. Like. There's um, a lot – I feel like there's a lot of mind games that can be played in the fighting, and you never know when a guy is doing it. There was times where I was getting ready to face a striker, and I knew that they were a striker, and I was known as a striker, but I would make a short little clip highlight of me getting takedowns a bunch of times. Yeah. And, and post that all the way leading up to the fight, just constantly, constantly, constantly. That way that's the last thing in their mind is that I'm going to – that oh, Damien is going to try to wrestle with me, and then – I go out there and I, I get I get I usually get some more highlights at it from my stand up. Right. <laughs> so so it's, the fact that guys are out there playing those mind games. I mean, because I was one of those guys that did it. I it, it's so great to just be ready for anything because the guy could be playing with you. You know, I mean, he could try to be selling the fact like, oh, I've been taking boxing classes and doing such and such, whatever. Uh, Let's say show up to the Floyd Mayweather gym and get a picture with Floyd and then say that, hey, I'm working at this gym now. You know, it's a way to throw guys off. And I, I feel like the, the guys who don't play into too much what their opponent is doing, just what they've done before. And then also just mapping out like I'm going to go win and it's keeping it as simple as that. It will be that simple. Yeah. Yeah. I agree a, a lot with that. Uh, and then also like. Like you said, being ready for everything, I'm like more. I guess I'm more worried about the guy's stand up, just because anybody can get knocked out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and he's a powerful guy, so that's like what I like to focus on because I know for a fact I train with better grapplers than than him. And so, shout out to Bobby uh, Lee. Yeah, Bobby Lee, Angel Pacheco, <laughs> uh, and all, even some, even the guys who aren't fighters, just at jujitsu that I get to roll with. There's so many good guys, and uh, yeah, I just. I don't know, like the the overall game plan kind of changes every fight, but it it's always just to kind of keep it standing. So, yeah, yeah, really looking forward to this fight uh, again. Everybody, May thirty first. That's for LFA sixty eight uh, Prior Lake at uh, at Mystic Lake Casino. Uh, be sure to be there. Check it out. Prior and, Lake is a city, technically. That, Prior that's, Lake, yeah. But uh, anyways, besides Damien here, uh, Joey, really glad to have you on. And there's one other thing that I had to touch on before letting you go here today. Um, and it's something that we kind of spoke on earlier. And what I, what I really like about you is that you're willing to fight everybody. You want to fight the top guys. And May 31st is the focus by far. Yeah. But I've seen the post earlier this week here. Uh, where you're looking for the you're looking for the best fights. You you're looking for number two Josh Fleck, and that's a fight that interests you for the Driller welterweight title. Um, what do you think that fight can do for you? And what do you think being number one, beating number two, showing that dominance as the as the best guy in the state can do for you? Oh um, yeah, I think it do a lot. Like even um, when I've talked with my coaches before, they've said like as far as going pro, like all the things I need to do. One of them is they want to see me fight a good wrestler, and I know he's he's got good wrestling credentials, so um, that's that's a big part of it. And then also him being undefeated at four and zero, I'd like if he could get another fight maybe before we end up fighting. If he could get to five and zero, it'd be even cooler to beat him. So um, that yeah, I like I just like that zero on his record. That that's cool to me. And then the, and then the the title that's a whole other thing. Um, yeah, it's vacant right now. I don't know when the. I don't know when it was last fought for the 170 pound title for Driller, but yeah, I got uh, it. Yeah, it's been a. I know it's been a while, so they need a good a good champion. So I'd be down to to take that spot for sure. Oh man, uh, they'd be lucky to have you put that belt on. And like I said, the, the fans would be lucky to see that fight. Yeah. There's uh, no there's five. no 
there's no other fight that I think is more deserving than you two going for that strap. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'll let you finish, TJ. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I was yeah. just going to say it, it being five rounds would be the coolest part to me if it, yeah. if it even goes that long. But that just being scheduled for a five-round fight, I think, is a different mentality that I'd like to – I've never gotten to experience, so I'd like to see what it's like. Yeah. yeah. And I think that would turn out to be one of the more high-profile amateur fights in the state in quite some time. Um, and, I mean, and that says a lot just even with the month we have looking forward to us with your fight, um, a lot of other really strong fights um, mm -hmm. month of May. So, like I said, obviously, you know, that's down the road and that's something that we can definitely cross our fingers and hope to see. Um, but, you know, seeing that you're in and I, you know, he didn't comment back, but I seen a couple likes on some statuses. So I think he's in as well. So, yeah, everybody takes care of business. That's a fight that I think everybody would enjoy to see. Um, just before we let you go here, anybody you want to thank, any sponsors, teammates you want to give a shout out to? Uh, no sponsors yet, but, uh, if, if any, um, yeah, if anyone wants to Get sponsor. On. He's looking, he's looking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for sponsors. So, uh, no, but I'd like to thank like all my, all my, there's too many teammates to name. So just all my, everybody I've been training with, um, and then all my coaches, Brock Larson, uh, Jay, Danny, um, the guys at the boxing gym, Chaz, Joe, they've been helping out and yeah, everyone who's been coming, coming and training. Yeah. No, thank you for the time. And we yeah. really appreciate you having on, dude. Trash talk is nothing without the fighters. Yeah, so. exactly. I'm a fan of the show, so it's awesome to be on. Hell hey, yeah. Really appreciate it. Like I said, really appreciate your time. Um, re reach out to this guy. Like I said, if, if you have serious sponsorships, this is someone who, you know, is one of the top amateurs in the state. And like I said, he's, he's going to make a run at the pro level as well. Um Appreciate everybody's time as always. Uh, Joey, best of luck on May 31st. Look forward to seeing you perform, sir. Yeah, thanks, guys. It'll be a good show. Yeah, get your tickets now. Order them online and select Joey Hart's name. Yeah. All right? <laughs> Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.